Life Unrehearsed on CJAD 800. Brought to you by Marco Vendramini of IG Private Wealth Management. MarcoVendramini.com. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist, specializing in grief and loss. Well, Corey, that was the school of rock. A lot of anxious parents, a lot of anxious kids. Kids, uh, how do you feel about sending kids back to school? <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm a little relieved that my kids are not of the age of sending back to school. Although one is a, in, it works in childcare, so uh, she is back at uh, daycare. She has been hasn't stopped. It's anxiety provoking, and it's anxiety provoking for a lot of reasons. What about you? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm fortunate too. I've got uh, one son, so he, he's at university at McGill, and so he's doing virtual. My daughter is in adult ed, so she'll be going back uh, in a couple of weeks, and she has to take public transport to get there. So she is definitely anxious. However, she's looking forward to it. She misses her buddies, yeah. and they're Zooming uh, left and right, right. but it doesn't, um, not the same. So who knows? And, and obviously for parents with younger children, this is... Uh, uh, a stressful and anxious time and uh, that's why we wanted to bring this up on, that's on this right episode. you know every year I think we have in the last few years we've been fortunate to have someone even Susan who is uh, who's speaking with us today talk about just general back to school anxiety I think that there's a, a different uh, uh, dynamic and a different feel right now so given that we're heading there soon max mask on mask off who knows how are parents and children feeling about this well thankfully we have social worker susan marks on the line she's going to help offer some important tips and suggestions to help alleviate some of what is likely to be a very stressful and anxious time in households welcome back to life i'm her susan thank you so much so let's start off with the just general question about what can back to school anxiety look like? So I think the most important thing is for people to realize that this notion of back to school anxiety goes back a long time, that it's something very normal that occurs every year because of that transition from summer to this new school year. And um, it can look like everything from behaviors and emotions that include tearfulness and some kids having a hard time wanting to go to school and not feeling well physically and some kids feeling very overactive and some feeling very tired, um, people obsessing about what the day is going to look like and asking a lot of questions. So it's just something to realize that it's been going on for many, many years. This year just might look a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. And it's amazing because, yes, there is the, the general anxiety that would happen year in and year out. Fair to say this year, um, uh, all bets are off. It's it's a whole, uh, as the term goes, new normal. And Susan, uh, you know, what are some of the things that are, are obviously going to make this year particularly challenging? So I think the first thing we have to remember is that most kids have not been physically at school since March. And a lot has happened during that time. And even if they've been doing online learning, they're returning to a building and doing school, you know, sort of the traditional way, as opposed to what happened in March when everyone got sent home. So that right away throws a wrench into everything because the expectations of what is going to be um, aren't there anymore because things have changed so much. Um, I think this year we're going to see a lot more separation anxiety in kids of all ages. We often see that in the younger kids, but I think this year because everyone's been home together with their families, there's going to be a lot more that we see, even with high school students, um, about having trouble being out of their homes and back in the school building. And the other thing I think we're going to see a lot of this year is that anticipatory anxiety of not really knowing what to expect because things are changing on a daily basis. So both of these together are going to really, in my opinion, be very big for many of the students entering school this year. Fair enough. You're listening to Susan Marks on Life on Rehearse. She's talking about back to school anxiety, particularly in the in this uh, age of COVID-19. So I, I imagine that you may have already seen or heard a lot of families where they've expressed some of the sentiments around this concern. What have you heard specifically about where are the areas that they would be particularly anxious? 
So I think this notion of the unknown and what exactly the procedures are going to look like is something that's making a lot of people anxious. I think at the core of it all is the anxiety about getting sick, about the fact that this virus is frightening and it's out there. And I think that people have managed to keep their families as protected as possible by not being in a school. And so there's this fear of what if I send my kids to school and all of a sudden um, they're going to get sick and we're all going to get sick. Um, and I think the other thing is there's so much information right now on social media. And sometimes it's not really even relevant to individual parents, but the more people read, the more anxious they start becoming because it, it's this feeling of panic that sets in that everybody else is so anxious, maybe I should be anxious as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Talking yeah. with social worker Susan Marks about uh, heading back to school and uh, how parents could uh, maybe do a few little tricks and even for, for the kids as well. Uh, you mentioned the unknown, Susan. I think that's so important. It really does come down to to knowledge is power uh, because it's the unknown that uh, that is creating fear and it's almost okay, let's get this done. And I, I was kind of snickering when you were talking about separation mm-hmm. anxiety for uh, families. You know, they've been so close knit together, but uh, a lot of parents I know are saying, <laughs> <laughs> when can yeah. it start? Okay. Can it start soon enough? You know, but it, let's realistically, um, there are going to be some very anxious children, very anxious uh, parents. It has been exasperated with, uh, with social media, but what symptoms can people look for, Susan? So I think that, listen, kids of different ages are going to present with many different symptoms. Um, I think we have to know that symptoms can be the physical ones. Those are sometimes the easiest ones to notice. It's the tearfulness. It's kids complaining of physically. Um, There also could be some kids who are having trouble controlling their emotions right now and as a result might become rude or sassy or talk back in class. Um, where they normally wouldn't, but at this time they're feeling so anxious themselves that they can't control it. And you might also see those kids who become very, very quiet and withdrawn. Um, And the one that I think drives people the craziest is sometimes the kids who ask a ton of questions and want to share information of of what they've heard. And they keep asking almost the teachers and their classmates information about what And I believe people don't have that information. It causes anxiety in them as well. So I think that there's going to be a lot of unpredictability and lots of varied behaviors this year more than any other year. That's absolutely true. I, I know that I had the opportunity to speak on CTV about this very topic, and, and one of the things we spoke about was the anxiety of not just the pandemic and getting sick, which is something that is absolutely there and in the foremost uh, in their minds, but things like the social anxiety of having not socialized with kids for a while or concerns of being able to catch up with all the schoolwork they, they have missed, like we're concerned about falling behind, ap- um, falling behind academically. There's so much there. So we have all this, but Susan, here's the question. How do we know if a kid is playing us or it's legit anxiety? So I want to believe that everything is legit because the feeling of anxiety is such an uncomfortable, incredibly um, terrible feeling that no one is going to pretend to feel it. I think that the difficulty is going to be that this year you're going to have kids who don't usually present as anxious and all of a sudden are presenting as anxious. Um, But I think any behavior we've seen needs to be validated and paid attention to. And I think the tricky part is going to be that there may be kids who show no signs of anxiety and yet are struggling a lot inside. So we have to really look at everything and nothing as being legit and and something that has to be treated and taken. Yeah, a bit of a slippery slope there, but for sure. We're talking with uh, social worker Susan Marks about heading back to school and uh, some of that uh, perhaps a little stress and additional anxiety this year than most. Now, Susan, we're going to head out to traffic, but we're going to put you on the spot uh, when we come back, and we're going to ask you what's the number one way to ease yours or your child's anxiety Life Unrehearsed on CJAD 800. Brought to you by Marco Vendramini of IG Private Wealth Management. MarcoVendramini.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota along with my co host, Matt Delvecchio, and we are talking to social worker Susan Marks about back to school anxiety in the age of COVID 19. So, Susan, what would be, if you had to pick, and I know you have a sort of laundry list of, of probably <laughs> techniques that you're using and have, have applied, what would be the number one suggestion technique to ease your child's anxiety? 
I think you're right. I have a laundry list. But the most important one, I think, is to try and stay focused in the moment and to take things one step at a time. I think in that respect, you're avoiding going two weeks ahead, what it's going to look like, even two days ahead. You are being present in the moment, and you're just trying to be successful in that moment. You know, I think it's such an important point, Susan. Um, it is all relative, and we sort of have to get into this. Let's get it started. Uh, and when I say all relative, I have a brother living in Atlanta, Georgia, with three kids. And could you imagine their anxiety levels? And they start school a little earlier than here in in Quebec. And so sometimes we do have to step back and uh, look at the big picture and... Um, you know, we have to hope for the best, We have, but we have to be uh, cautious. We don't want to sugarcoat it. Um, and so it's important to realize that and, and to step back a bit. Now, I know your laundry list. You've got several other things you want to bring up, Susan, so fire away. So I think that, you know, when parents are helping kids who are feeling anxious, I think they have to remind them that their feelings and concerns are being held felt by so many others and that it's normal. And I think... Also, to remind them that they are safe and that their school wants them to be healthy and safe, that they are going back into a situation where everyone is doing their absolute best with the same goal of health and safety. Um, I think the other thing is kids really listen to and watch their parents. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's so important to be honest, but I think there has to be a filter of the scary stuff. I don't think parents need to be discussing every single thing that they as parents are afraid of in front of their kids at all times of day either. Because I think that kids are going to be looking to their parents, especially at this time, for that feeling of, is this okay for me to do? Am I safe to go back to school? And while it's so important to be honest, there also has to be some level of a filter there as well. I love that. That is like so, that's gold. And I knew you would come up with those <laughs> things and say them well, because again, people don't realize that the message they're saying, kids, what, do as I say, not as I do. They're watching and they're watching everything, correct? And so... A hundred percent. And it's okay to acknowledge that you as a parent are frightened as well, but not at, at an extreme where the kids are seeing that you're panicked or else the kids are going to think, if my parents are that panicked, why are they sending me back? <laughs> true, 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 true. So at the same time, that's some things that we need to be as parents recognized for, for our children. Well, how can we help the parents? I think as parents, we need to breathe often and frequently <laughs> and deeply um, and realize that this is different and scary and new for everybody. Um, I think as parents, we have to reduce our time on social media and, again, pick and choose what we're engaging in on social media because it can become, you know, a, a whole tornado um, of reading people's things and getting more and more anxious. Um, and I think parents need to build this relationship of trust with their individual schools. If they have questions, if a parent has a question, reach out to your school and ask them that question. You don't have to rapid fire the question at them, but ask them what are they doing about certain things. Let them know your concerns so that the relationship is being built and then parents are going to feel safer, I hope, sending their kids back to school. We're talking with social worker Susan Marks, uh, helping a bunch of parents and their kids, but easing the stress and anxiety about going back to school. And Susan, you know, my personal feeling you know, kids are going to adapt. They've always had to adapt and they will adapt to this. Sometimes I think it's parents that are, are a bit of the issue, uh, but let's face it, both will have to, to adapt. And, um, and be prepared. Try to organize uh, your children for some of the things that they're going to have to expect. And I think one of the big questions is, is going to be related. What's going to happen that first time your child is sick? You know, they got a uh, runny nose and, and the typical cold flu symptoms. Well, now we're probably going to have to get tested. And it shouldn't be the end of, end of the world that you have to get tested. But I think um, we need to start preparing for the inevitable that uh, there will be some increased tests. And uh, this this is okay if this happens. Right. And I think you, you said something fabulous in there, and it's about being prepared. I think the more we prepare our kids for the possibilities of things, like practicing wearing masks and mm -hmm. finding a comfortable one that they're comfortable with, or reminding them about that hygiene, or reminding them that other people at their school might be social distancing different than them, so reminding them about, you know, the routines and the respect of others, 
we're preparing them. Um, and if we take it one step at a time with them, it's going to be so much more successful than going too far in advance. That's right. That's why I like your concept of, which is so bang on, of uh, live in the moment right now. What can you do now? What do you need to do now to be safe? What do we need to do right now? Because if we have learned anything from COVID, we've learned about uncertainty okay. <laughs> and uh, and the uh, challenge of planning. So we do the best that we can. I and, Go ahead. And you know, Corey, the, the uncertainty is the scariest part, right? Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, kind sure. of, I keep saying throughout these five, past five mm-hmm. months, that we have to seek comfort in this uncomfortable messiness that's happening around us and just recognize that everyone's uncomfortable and that's okay. But what are you going to do? Rather than worrying about why it's happening and how it's going to change, what are you going to do in the moment to plan to make it feel a little bit more comfortable for you? Yeah, it's so true. And and uh, as Corey knows, uh, I try to use the occasional sports analogy. And I almost <laughs> look at this as we're heading into the hockey season. You know, the Habs are doing well. It, the game's just about to start, but it hasn't started yet. And you're in this waiting period. And you know what? You just got to get it started and uh, adapt along the way. I think there's a lot of uh, schools. I know a lot of administrators are working extremely hard to make this uh, as, as good as possible. There's going to be uh, little steps along the way, little hiccups and... and uh, and there will have to be adjustments but I think we have to step back like you were saying Susan and, and look at the big picture and um, be open communications with the kids but um, we're making it it seems a lot worse than it would actually be right <laughs> and and I think that the more the more we just accept that this is happening and once we get started the anticipation of starting is always worse than the actual event so <laughs> let's all get started and let's all know that everyone's goal is for health and safety That's everyone's it. goal is that this works the best way that it can so as long as we keep that in mind i hope it's going to take away some of the anxiety absolutely uh very very sage wise words susan as always so let me thank you uh, so much for t- uh, joining us today how can people get a hold of you um, they can reach out at susanmarks um, at gmail.com anytime. All right, Susan, thank you very much. Corey, what do we have uh, next week? Next week, we're very excited to have Montreal private investigator George Pinto to hear about why the request for surveillance has gone up during COVID-19. Going to be very interesting uh, with George coming on the show next week and also... Have you got phobias? Well, we're going to have psychotherapist Georgia Dow. She's going to teach us how to manage fears and phobias that uh, perhaps have been even exasperated during this pandemic. And uh, we want to thank you for listening. We also want to thank our technical producer, Dave Simon, uh, for helping out and making this show run smoothly. And you can catch us every Sunday at 4 p.m. on CJD 800.